Um, our next presentation today is from Thomas Gallant of Satellink R&D. He's the Satellink R&D manager, and he'll be talking to machine learning integration in electronic monitoring for fish and fleet management. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, FAO Artificial Intelligence for a Digital Blue Planet uh, conference. Uh, we are very happy to be here. I'm Thomas Galan. I'm working as a R&D manager in, in Sadlink uh, company. And uh, well, I'm going to speak about uh, challenges and goals of uh, machine learning techniques to identify species on board uh, fishing vessels. So I'm going to share my presentation now. So as I was uh, speaking, this is the title of my of my presentation. So hope it uh, it it helps. For those who don't know uh, Sadling, Sadling is a Spanish company. It is a technological company founded in 1992. Specifically for this uh, conference, where I'm going to speak about uh, electronic monitoring business that we have uh, more than seven years of uh, experience and more than 250 systems deployed around the world. About Sadling, just uh, to explain a little bit more about what we do, we have uh, different solutions for governments and regulators, uh, solutions for the, specifically for the fishing industry and solution about SATCOM, satellites, satellite devices that uh, we can install differently, uh, even if it is uh, on a fishing boat or even in, in the earth. Our experience in EM, we have more than 250 uh, onboard uh, installations and more than 100 train observers and uh, nine data review regional centers with all the infrastructure deployed on the place. So what is CTube and what is the, the solution that we, that we have? Um, I'm going to be very quick on this one because this could be more than 30 minutes of, of uh, slide, but on the main uh, focus that I want to, to, to do is, is that uh, the Sadling CTube, it is a piece of hardware that you can install on board a vessel. And each recording that, or each data that it is recorded into the CTube, it is uh, encrypted. Okay. All this information uh, comes could come from an IP camera or a sensor unit or satellite uh, uh, devices, and, or it could be even transmitted uh, through satellite, and even with a GSM, 3G, 4G, or even 5G in the future. Uh, um, for transmit the information into a server, a LAN server. So the key question here is that uh, the analysis part, it is uh, very, could be a very expensive uh, part because you, you need to go specifically to analyze the moments that you want to check on those videos. So we've developed a uh, machine learning algorithms to try to find out what is the specific moment or the interesting moment depending on the analysis purposes okay so these algorithms uh, at the end will reduce costs during em analysis so we have a set of algorithms uh, we've divided into two big categories one is for long line fishing and the other one is for person fishing for longline fishing, we have uh, two algorithms. Those are the setting hole in detector algorithm in that it will detect when and where the setting on hauling operations took place. Uh, let's say the start and the end moments. And those are based on a specific neural network based on, on GPS and other parameters that we, that we include uh, in the C2 part to extract data to be easier afterwards to detect these moments. And the other long line fishing algorithms would be the saddling capture algorithm. I'm going to show a video uh, in the next slide. This is for identifying target and incidental species, just to identify the, uh, the capture event, okay? not, not to describe it. 
And the other algorithm that we have, it is the person fishing uh, uh, braille detector algorithm, just to want to know exactly when a braille has moved with fish. Okay, so then uh, all the fishing effort would be easily detected. So as uh, as I was saying, this is the um, capture long line uh, algorithm. You can see there that the algorithm has detected a, a fish on board a vessel. Even more, you can see that the fish, of course, it is moving. There are people uh, hiding the, the fish, and the neural network is still detecting that fish. But even more, if there's more than one fish on deck, the algorithm will detect it, as you can see in this specific moment. Okay. So, but this is detecting fish, but it's not classifying it. Okay. So, the challenge for this it is that if we ask then, okay, what's next? Next, then it would be the classification. Okay. So we know when, let's say, we know when a fish it is on board the deck, but we want to know what or who, let's say. Uh, the species. Okay, so this is the sampling species algorithm that we are just uh, finishing, and we have all these results here. We have a big data set, more than 200,000 labeled images that we've labeled specifically, saying which species are and everything. We have 13 different classes to classify the the the, the fish detected. For example, tuna skipjack, jellofin, of course, skipjack and jellofin are tuna-like, uh, well, are tuna families of, of fishes, but uh, we have a specific category for tuna if they, it is not really clear between skipjack, yellowfin, big eye, or whatever. Of course, we have uh, other categories as catch or bycatch events if they are not uh, target species. Our success rate, it is depending on each class, Tuna-like uh, fishes are uh, between 70 and 93%, as you can see in the slide. At, um, for example, race or meant race are uh, between 81% and even 99.9% .9 of uh, classification with the uh, previous algorithm run. The success rate differentiation target versus incidental species, it is the 90%. And this is, could be the most interesting part of this algorithm, because uh, then you can go exactly for the moment to for the in incidental species uh, target. So let let's see how it works. Uh, this video. As you can see here, it is the uh, the video is showing two species. First, uh, it's shown very bad values, but now. The value it is uh, it is big eye, and it is say, saying that the second species of uh, could be a yellow fin. Okay, so the algorithm it is it is working fine because it is detected that this is a big eye as it is, but of course uh, depending on the angle of the each uh, image that uh, the algorithm is analyzing, it could detect different species. So what are the challenges of, of developing this algorithm? These challenges uh, for us, uh, we've uh, did a very big investment while training the network. We need to pay a lot of money uh, to people to identify exactly what, what the species are. It's, it's uh, crop fish on the image. And of course, we need to create a very big and debugged uh, data set. Um, one of the problems that we had and this is something that uh, um, everyone that starts with this, they can face a lack of images on a specific incidental species. For example, in our algorithm, uh, turtles, uh, we identified that, uh, that we have a very few images of, of turtles. So then the neural network is not very well trained on specific species because we don't have all that images. And of course, we need to have a balanced data set. So the challenge would be to have as many as incidental species as target species uh, to 
train better the algorithm. This is a sentence I, I wanted to, to write that it is that if a human cannot classify it, a computer will not be able to do it. Uh, this is uh, this could sound funny, but at the end, it is what happened. Uh, we, we cannot imagine a neural network as a magical thing. It is trained with our knowledge. So if we cannot classify it, the computer will not be able to do it. So I hope this uh, small um, chat uh, worked for you. And uh, I hope I can clarify any other questions that you have. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, my question regards some of the challenges of shrinking down your data set, considering you've got cameras on boats, many boats collecting over time. Are, are the algorithms working on board the vessels so that they can already snip out the footage that you want to keep, or are they collecting everything and then you post-process to find the events uh, once you get the imagery back to shore. Yeah, uh, hi, hi everyone. Um, all these algorithms require a lot of uh, processing power and this is usually done using uh, GPUs. Uh, this kind of, of devices, uh, they, as I said, they, they consume a lot of, of power and um, it is uh, very difficult to integrate them in, into into a small size equipment that it is going on board a vessel with, uh, with uh, at some point with some limited space and limited power that that the vessel can uh, give to the to the unit. Okay, so um, we are working on on two different uh, ways on on integrating all this uh, machine learning and the running of the of the algorithm. Um, first of of first run, it, it would be extracting the video and then analyzing in, into a, a land uh, server that uh, could have better power and better space to, to have it uh, with all these um, ventilation and temperature checks and everything because all these devices uh, they, they got very hit. And the, and the second uh, approach that uh, we, we are testing right now because the, the first one it is something that we have already in production uh, it would be to install some uh, equipment that has less power than a GPU on board a vessel, and then try to analyze and identify where, where, when is the fishing activity being done or whatever, and then extract those videos using 4G or VSAT connection using satellite, and then analyze it on land. So it would be a, a device that could be installed on board a vessel, then it will consume less power and the output, it will be less precise. This is um, something that uh, it's called edge, com edge computing, okay? So that, that, that's, that's something that we are uh, doing some research right now, but uh, at the end, if we want to, the, the results you saw in the presentations, they are done using a GPU in, in a land server. Thank you very much. Uh, Max, can I hand over to you for any questions here? Yeah, sure. Um, you said um, about the, the species with uh, limited uh, uh, images. Uh, do, do you have any um, ideas about solutions to tackle species with limited data set for training? Uh, so, sorry, Matt, but, but your audio for me, what, it was uh, not clear. If, if, oh, if, sorry, if, apologies. Um, I was just asking, do you have any ideas of how to tackle the species with limited data set of uh, training images? Yeah, well, um, this is this is uh, this is a problem that we that we are facing a lot because, uh, as I was said in in the presentation, uh, the, the idea would be to to have a balanced data set. Okay, so um, uh, in in the in the presentation, I was I was referring specifically to turtles um, uh, that we have the the proportion between tuna-like species in, in our field and turtles, fortunately, is not is not the same. That's because uh, they are not catching <laughs> turtles for 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 fishing as, as a target species. Um, so the idea would be to um, uh, extract from a video clip uh, thousands of images. Okay, because we are uh, right now we are people having and standing and uh, labeling and identifying inside a video, okay, here is a, a tuna or yellowfin or whatever. 
uh, and then we take that specific image and then we label it. And with that mechanism, we've uh, uh, reached near 2,100, uh, not 200,000, sorry, uh, images. But what we can do is to extract some seconds of that video and extract each of, of all, all the frames that compose that maybe a 10 second video or whatever. And then we can multiply that data set to increase the quality of it. So that's something that uh, that's one of, uh, of the ideas. But uh, um, of course, that's something that we must invest on to, to uh, uh, improve the, the, the algorithm and, and all that unbalanced classes. Yeah, sure, it's very interesting. Um, another option, uh, I, I was training a model with Gianpaolo and um, I work in some uh, 3D animation packages uh, typically used for film production, where there's photorealistic rendering, texturing, we can make things wet and dry, dark or light. And I actually rendered up um, some video scenarios of, uh, of fish where I knew that it could challenge the algorithm and deliberately presented them as difficult scenarios, faking the actual, you know, the, the fish didn't exist. Uh, and it was a really good way of training them. So even like we've got a presentation this afternoon on cryptic shark species. And mm -hmm. some of them, you know, we've only got a few photos or something like that. But 3D rendering actually does offer that you can take a background image. And obviously what you see when you see Jurassic Park or, the, you know, a film with, with an animal in it. In fact, I worked on uh, rendering animated prehistoric fish on a production about 25 years ago. Uh, but you can simulate these images and, and present difficult scenarios deliberately to your, to your model and, and challenge it like that, which was, it's kind of an interesting approach. Yeah, well, our, our, our idea is not to, to, to generate a, a big lab on board our fishing vessel, okay? Uh, what, what, what we want is just to, to have some, you know, EM equipment installed and not to modify how they how they fish or how the the operation is made, so that's why uh, we we want to keep it like that because we want we, we don't want to interfere with with the fishing with the fishermen. But even even with that, uh, we're facing that uh, some images that are extracted uh, that, that they allow us to to use for this uh, for the development of these algorithms. The, the camera is, uh, uh, you know, with, with water drops and it is you not, know, it is blurry and everything because we don't want them to, to be uh, every day, uh, you know, taking care of the EM. What they do is to fish and, uh, and EM is something apart. So uh, that's the, the, the image quality with, with, with water drops and everything. It, it, it could uh, give uh, bad results on the, on the neural network, okay, because it it could it could explode everything, you know. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> Sorry, Thank Kim. You. Can I a very yeah. quick, maybe very stupid question to Thomas? Oh, no, I like your question. Take <laughs> it in there. I'm I'm way not as advanced as Matt be with his uh, image rendering, but why don't you use uh, like a plastic turtle to test your algorithm? <laughs> well, uh, oh, did I'm... you ever? Did you? Is, is anybody ever tried to do that? <laughs> No, well, uh, uh, it would be it would be in in our case, of course, we have we have uh, several hundred images of of, of uh, turtles, uh, but uh, the 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 answer for this is that maybe we can find out uh, some false positive um, um, detections. This is because at the end, the neural network they they they, they try to learn what is a turtle by example. Okay. So let's imagine this plastic turtle gives some bright because of the light or whatever, and, and the plastic, uh, you know, texture. Then, if a real turtle doesn't have those brights because of this uh, material, then it would be uh, we, we will be contaminating the network, uh, presumably, um, uh, with this uh, plastic uh, turtle. So. It, it is a good question. It was it wasn't a, a stupid one, and this is something that we've uh, spoke a lot in the company. Uh, Try to to okay. Let, let, let's do a mock up uh, uh, turtle or or tuna or whatever with a with a toy or whatever. But uh, it's not. Is uh, our test? They they say it's not working as as good as 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 it could be uh, the idea initially. I'll just answer you as well, Anton. Um, in, in a 
rendering package, you don't have a cost of going onto the boat and throwing a plastic turtle around. Uh, and also there are controls such as subsurface scattering, uh, uh, which are very fine controls of how surfaces respond. And you can get extremely close uh, at a macro scale with a simulated texture and contemporary rendering packages. The, 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 the simulation, the physics simulation of photons is extremely controllable um, in comparison to a plastic turtle. It's cheap as well. <laughs> Before we go off down the plastic toy making or rendering avenue, <laughs> let's carry on this presentation. So thank you very much for yours and Satlink's uh, work talking for that. Thank you.